The New York Times reported that U.S. President Joe Biden has given Ukraine permission to fire U.S. Atakms long-range missiles at targets in Russia. Ukraine has been using these missiles for over a year, but only on its own territory, and has repeatedly called on the U.S. to grant permission to strike Russia. Atakms stands for Army Tactical Missile System. The missiles are manufactured by Lockheed Martin. Atakms has several modifications, they can be with a single warhead weighing about 250 kilograms, or carry cluster munitions. They also have different flight ranges, from 165 to 300 kilometers. These missiles are launched from M270 MLRS or HIMARS launchers, both of which are in the possession of the Ukrainian Defense Forces. It is known that Atakms can operate in any weather conditions and at any time of day. They are also difficult to intercept by air defense systems. The reason is the high speed and the steep trajectory of the missile. To intercept such missiles, the Russians need a layered air defense system with the latest modifications of the S-400 divided by S-300V and Buk systems. As the former speaker of the right sector Yuri Ignat said, these missiles, in particular, will allow destroying the Russian missile systems that are shelling Ukraine from Crimea. For example, the Bastion system, which fires Onyx missiles. Atakms missiles with a range of 300 kilometers cover the Kursk region and reach Voronezh, Bryansk and Rostov-on-Don. As Russian media write, the missile's range may include areas that the Ukrainian armed forces previously reached only with drones. Recall, US has allowed the Ukrainian armed forces to strike targets in Russia and North Korea exclusively in the Kursk region using Atakms ballistic missiles. This limitation is not expected to significantly alter the overall course of the war, reports the American Institute for the Study of War. U.S. officials stated that the partial lifting of restrictions aims to create a specific and limited effect on the battlefield and will not significantly alter the course of the war. However, the Institute does not rule out the possibility of expanding this authorization to other regions of the aggressor state over time. Meanwhile, the ISW noted that the current authorization for attacks only in the Kursk region does not completely deny Russian forces refuge on their territory, as hundreds of military sites remain within the reach of HIMARS missile defense systems in other border regions of Russia. The institute emphasized that if Western countries continue to limit Ukraine's ability to defend itself, Russia's military will benefit from any partial refuge. The U.S. should allow Ukraine to strike all legitimate military targets within Russia's operational and deep rear within range of U.S.-provided weapons, not just those in the Kursk region, the ISW stated. The first reaction from Ukraine to the long-awaited decision from the U.S. to use U.S.-supplied long-range missiles to strike deeper inside Russia was notably restrained. Today, much is being said in the media about us receiving permission for the relevant actions. But strikes are not made with words. Such things are not announced. The missiles will speak for themselves, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said in his nightly video address on Sunday. His statement came shortly after he posted a message of condolence on Telegram following a Russian attack on a nine-story building in the northern city of Sumy, 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. In his nightly address, Zelensky also noted that on Sunday, Russia conducted one of the largest and most dangerous missile and drone strikes targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure. And this is the answer to everyone who tried to achieve something with Putin through talks, phone calls, hugs, and appeasement, he said. America is Ukraine's most valuable ally in the war, providing more than $56.2 billion in security assistance since Russian forces invaded in February 2022. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. News of Biden's decision followed meetings over the last two days with the leaders of South Korea, 
Japan and China where North Korean troops were central to the talks, which took place on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Peru. Biden did not mention the decision during a speech at a stop to the Amazon rainforest in Brazil on his way to the Group of 20 summit. As many as 12,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia, according to U.S., South Korean and Ukrainian assessments. U.S. and South Korean intelligence officials say North Korea also has provided Russia with significant amounts of munitions to replenish its dwindling weapons stockpiles. Сьогодні багато в медіа говорять про те, що ми отримали дозвіл на відповідні дії. Але удари завдають не словами. Такі речі не анонсують. Ракети самі за себе скажуть. Обов'язково. Слава Україні! China's leader Xi Jinping met for the last time with U.S. President Joe Biden but was already looking ahead to President-elect Donald Trump and his America First policies, saying Beijing is ready to work with a new administration. The two leaders gathered Saturday on the sidelines of the annual Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Biden was expected to urge Xi to dissuade North Korea from further deepening its support for Russia's war on Ukraine. Without mentioning Trump's name, she appeared to signal his concern that the incoming president's protectionist rhetoric on the campaign trail could send the U.S.-China relationship into another valley. China is ready to work with a new U.S. administration to maintain communication, expand cooperation and manage differences so as to strive for a steady transition of the China-U.S. relationship for the benefit of the two peoples, she said through an interpreter. In a major flourishing SciTech revolution, Neither decoupling nor supply chain disruption is a solution, she said. Only mutual, beneficial cooperation can lead to common development. Small yard, high fence is not what a major country should pursue. There's much uncertainty about what lies ahead in the US-China relationship under Trump, who campaigned promising to levy 60% tariffs on Chinese imports. Biden, who is winding down more than 50 years of public service, talked in broader brushstrokes about where the relationship between the two countries has gone. For a decade, you and I have spent many hours together.